everybody. Well, here we are. It is the last day of October, which I guess that means it's Halloween. And I'm kind of reflecting a little bit on all the chores and projects that I didn't get done this year. Everything that I had plenty of time to do. And then here I am wishing I'd have had more time, especially in 2020 with everything that happened this year. Here I am wishing there was more time to do stuff. One of those projects that I didn't get done was move my two meter ground plane antenna. Uh, it started out very perfectly this year. I uh, had 100 feet of LMR 400 feeding it from multiple radios. Had a nice little switch. I could jump back and forth with different radios and uh, it worked great. It was anchored on the side of the house and then it went up to where it, uh, where the antenna lived, way up, uh, may, maybe 35 feet off the ground, which was perfect and it worked great. Especially this time of year where all the leaves are coming off the trees and it's clearing up, it would have been great right now. But back in the spring when I was doing yard work, part of the coax come unclipped from the side of the house and laid down in the grass. The grass got a little tall and I jumped on it to keep the the grass down and try to make things somewhat pretty and uh i chopped that lmr 400 up started out with 100 feet of lmr 400 and i ended up with about 50 feet and 51 foot pieces of lmr 400 i guess the good thing is i ended up with a whole bunch of little patch cables that i can use now you know those little patch cables that you'll never buy you'll never take the time to order so I'm up here today, I've got a couple of radios and I want to show you an antenna that uh, that I've, I've showed before, but I've never really went into detail very much about. And we might not really even go into detail here, but I want to show you how well it works. First off, we're still within range of my hotspot and this is just about as far as I can go on this property from my hotspot before, uh, before I lose signal. That's a JJ, that's a Japan station right there. Pretty cool. But we're not talking about digital today. Now I have a whole bunch of different stations programmed into here. That one's kind of far, let's see if it'll work. Nothing. Okay, I'm not even raising any of these. I'm gonna hook it up to an external antenna here and see how it works. Well, it looks pretty cool here, don't it? Oh, got this little guy hanging in a tree here, sort of conspicuously, inconspicuously, secretively, maybe. Uh, this goes up to a Slim Jim, and this is the adapter. This is going to hook into the radio here. This is the Yezu FT-70D that I talk so much about and that I absolutely love. Okay, we're still on the same frequency. I think it's, you can see it. I hope it focuses. But we're going to try it, see if we can hear anything. Hey, here. KE8HSW. That's quite a step away to reach that repeater there. Let's try some others. Oh, 22 p.m. This is the KE8BDF repeater. That guy sounds pretty clear too, don't it? This is KE8HSW. I'm just identifying. I'm not really wanting to talk to anybody right now. Just trying to see how far out I can get. Right. Oh, hey, Richard, still the digital. Mostly hanging 20 feet or so away from the tree, you know, suspended out. So at this point, so it's not really in the branches or too much. That's quite a step. That's at the very southern point of Ohio, where that repeater is. That's quite a ways away from me. I'll put how many miles that is from me. I'm pretty surprised with that. That didn't happen the last time that I checked this. That's pretty cool. Now it's a little hard to follow the antenna, the coax as it comes up out. And then it turns into antenna. And then it goes way up through the tree and it turns back into rope of how I pulled it up there.
so the radio that I was using here, the Yezu FT70D, this is the adapter that I got. You can see that, I don't know. This is called an SMA male. That is an SMA male. That screws on right where the antenna was. Now here, I have an SMA female. This is the female. These would actually just screw together. But I need this because I'm going to try to hook up my Anytone 878 Plus and see if I can reach any kind of DMR station from here. All right, let's see if I can remember how to do all this. Okay, so I'm able to get one DMR repeater. It's the closest one that I could find, and there's, of course, nobody on it. So that's uh, that's the story of DMR. This is KE8HSW. And I doubt anybody's going to come back. Nobody really uses DMR that much. Well, anyway, at least I know I can reach that far. So the cool thing about that antenna is it's super easy to make. It's a piece of twin lead. And I don't remember the measurements. You can look them up online. I actually bought two, and then I decided to make this one. It works just as good as the ones that I bought. And uh, if this one craps out up there in the tree, I'm not really out anything. You used to be able to find twin lead hanging off of any old house. That used to be how they would get their antenna for their TV into their house. And then there was the ladder line. It was two leads. And it had the big square spaces in between the two wires. It was always cracked up and banging against the window or something, you know, that people stopped messing with them once all the, the digital antennas come around. So uh, it works great. I think it's rated up to 200 watts, which I'll never reach with these little handhelds. Although I do have an amplifier. Well, I guess one of these days I'm just going to have to go ahead and get everything fixed up at the house so I don't have to drive all the way up here on top of this hill. But it is a good excuse to get up here. It is nice to get out in the woods every now and then. Well, I suppose by now you realize that this isn't an instructional video or a how-to video. It's more of a you-can-do-it-yourself kind of video. Maybe to inspire you a little bit more to get out and do something yourself to figure it out. It's not that difficult. It just uh, a little bit of wire, a little bit of math. You can even find the blueprints online on how to do this stuff. Super simple. If you don't know how to solder, you really don't have to. You can just twist the wires together and it'll work. Not for very long. Well, maybe for a long time. Twist the wires together and uh, use some heat shrink. Use good enough tape. Use some liquid sealant, maybe. It'll work. But that's kind of what it's about. That's what the hobby is about, is experimenting. Seeing what you can do and what you can't do. Seeing what works and what doesn't. It's a hobby, man. It's not a career. Well, I really do appreciate everybody watching. And as you can see, I'm closing in on a mile marker there. Of course, by the time you see this, we may have already passed it. No, I'd really like to say thank you to everybody that watches, everybody that subscribes. That little thumbs up's pretty cool too. You keep watching and I'll keep making the videos. Thanks for watching everybody. And as always, have a good one.